Hello and welcome to Ye Yu Lab. Today we are going to go through a development of a voice assistant that making use of the fast inference by Grok. As an LLM enthusiast, you must hear about Grok and surprised by its super fast inference experience with some open source language models. Have no yet? Okay, try this demo first. This is a demo on Hunky Face called Catch Me If You Can. It shows that the app is powered by Grok and Gemma. There is an input area and no sending button. So every time when you import the request, the generated test will displayed immediately. So let me try. Write a blog post. Blog post. Look at the response. It's crazy, right? About Boho Island. The generation speed is much faster than my typing speed. From its online playground, its processing speed can reach as high as more than 700 tokens per second for running the Gemma 7B instruction model. Implementing chatboot with Gerox LPU inference engine begins with accessing the API in the Grok Cloud platform. The use of the API remained free of charge and subject to a rate limits that guarantees stable service operation. So you will see there will be 30 requests per minute, 14,000 requests per day, and 40,000 uh, tokens per minute for the overall rate limits for free use. Since the price of API usage has been recently released on its document page, I guess Girok will soon charge developers for inference, although the price for a million uh, tokens are quite the lowest among the online inference market. You will see the Llama 2 70B only cost 0 0.7 per million tokens. And the Gemma 7B 8K content lens model will only cost 10 cents and dollars for a million uh, tokens. For the code implementation, if you're familiar with the format of OpenAI API, it must be smooth to switch your existing, existing projects to Grux uh, Inference API. So after you installing the Grux uh, packages, and then you only have to change three items from your OpenAI projects. The first one is to replace the OpenAI function with Grok function. Then replace your OpenAI API key with your Grok API key that you can uh, create it from your Grok account. The third one is replace the OpenAI's model name with, with the model name that supported by Grok. So currently there are three models that can be supported. Llama 2, Mixture 8 plus 7B, and Gemma 7B. That's it for developing a chatbot by using Grok API. Let's walk through a demo of a voice assistant with a decent UI and a smooth voice conversation experience. Now let's see how the voice assistant works. Start listening. Write a tweet about Boho Island. Discover the natural beauty and adventure of Boulder Island. With towering cliffs, crystal clear waters, and abundant wildlife, it's the perfect destination for outdoor enthusiasts. Hashtag Boulder Island, hashtag nature lovers, hashtag outdoor adventure. Add more hashtags.
Sure, here are some additional hashtags you might use when tweeting about Boulder Island. Hashtag travel, hashtag island life, hashtag nature, hashtag wildlife, hashtag explore, hashtag adventure, hashtag hiking, hashtag kayaking, hashtag camping, hashtag ecotourism, remember. Here is the block diagram of this project. The voice assistant has a basic HTML structure utilizing Bootstrap for styling and JavaScript functions to manage functionalities like speech processing and speech recognition. We have a Python-based Flex program ready to work with Grok Prince API and OpenAI Test to Speech API. It shows how the system fits into the user experience. When the user clicks the start button, they speak, voice recognized, and Grok processed. Then the AI responds, and the speech is synthesized back into the audible answer, and loops the workflow for continuous voice input until the button is clicked again. Now let's work through the code step by step. We are starting in the main HTML body where the simple chat container lives. Notice that we use bootstrapped classes for a clean responsive UI design. And of course you can select another styling library for a more attractive design. The key elements here is the talk button, the user text bubble and the AI responsible bubble. Design in the start button object and echo text object. Moving forward, let's see the script part. The JavaScript section is the communication hub with event listener managing user actions to start and stop voice recognition. Nowadays, there are many options that you can select to enable the speech to test function like OpenAI's Whisper and Azure's AI Speech. In this demo, I will be utilizing an open source JavaScript library known as the name of Web Speech API. While it may not be as robust to interference or as accurate as AI powered tools, it strikes a highly effective balance between cognition speed and precision. Since we use language models to generate responses towards the speech test, some wrong or missing words will not stump the AI. Here is the implementation of the voice recognition. It's very typical that you must configure the recognition features and implement key event handlers. For the configuration, make sure the interim results is set to be false to prevent interim results that trigger the unresolved event frequently. The continuous field should be set to true to let the recognition process run, in, run uninterrupted, allowing for the capture of multiple speech sessions without automatic pausing. Among the events handler, the on start and on end are only defined for working with the start button status. And the on result will be called once each complete speech is recognized. It will consolidate the script and call the customer function process speech afterwards for further display and processing. Now let's see the function definition of process speech. We first display what you said into text on the HTML page, and then send the text for processing. It sends a post request to a local server on port 5000 of the service process speech, which I will introduce later with the text in JSON format. Upon receiving a response from the server, it extracts the AI's generated text into data response. It creates another visual element for the AI response. 
right after the user text on the HTML page. Then it calls the speak function to convert the, the AI text into speech and play it aloud. And you can see the definition of the speak that we will send another HTML uh, post request to the server for another service called synthesize speech. In, and in that service, which convert the text into audible string back to the HTML and from the HTML front end, we use the widget audio to play the sound. Finally, we add another another function start session with a HTML post request to the third service on the 5000 port, which is the start speech to notify the backend to clear up the history of messages. Now let's see the Python code of Flask backend, which runs locally, integrates with OpenAI's text to speech model and language model mixture 8 times 7 b via Grok service to create a conversational voice assistant. Let's break down the key components. The Flask is the web framework used to build this application. The course from Flask course, make sure the API handles cross origin request properly which is especially important during the development when the front end might be served from a different domain. We should install the necessary dependence first, including Flask, Flex Course, OpenAI, Grok, and the text-to-speech is my custom function that do the same job as the text-to-speech functionality. Then input these packages into the code. The two API endpoints, Grok and OpenAI, are initialized with relevant API keys to interact with the respective services. It's important to note that the API key should be kept secret and not hard coded in the production code. Also, initial the structure of historical messages, init message, set the stage for the human AI conversations behaviors, like you are a voice chatbot that responds a human user's speech input. The speech input texts are sometimes broken or hard stop due to the listening mechanism. If the message you read is not complete, please ask the user to repeat or, or complete politely and concisely. Remember you are speaking, not writing, so oral expression in plain language. Please also note that here the system prompt is not an actual system prompt because most open source models do not support system roles. That's why I use user roles to replace the system role to deliver overall instruction to the mode. And also, I create a fake assistant message that says, OK, I understand, to follow the user message. Moving forward, the root process speech handles post request with the user input text to prompt a model which is original from the voice speech. It's update history messages to keep conversation context and use the Grok inference LLM to generate an appropriate response. The assistant's reply is appended to the conversation history and returned as AI response. The root synthesized speech processes post requests containing text to be synthesized into voice. The open client audio speech crate function converts the text powered by model TTS1 from OpenAI 
to an audible file streamed out as a output.mp3 file, which is then returned to the client to play on the front end web page. There are voice characters other than Alloy in OpenAI's library. And of course, you can replace the OpenAI function with other custom functions that you prefer to complete the test to speech task. The start speech route allows for resetting the chat boot to its initial state by resigning the history of messages to initial message. That's all for the Flex app. We can proceed to execute it. The following output indicates a successful debugging run for the local server on port 5000. Okay. Now you can either deploy the HTML file into your local or remote server to be accessed via URL or double click the, the HTML file for an instant run. In conclusion, this voice assistant demonstration has showcased the seamless integration of Grok Lightning Fast Inference API resulting in a highly responsive and interactive user experience in both text and voice output. The project combines HTML, JavaScript, and Python Flexc implements a typical but simple client-server architecture with real-time speech recognition and synthesis. That's all for today. For the tutorial and the source code, you can find the link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Keep innovating and I'll catch you in the next one.